Hey guys, so today this little fella is going to his new home in Albuquerque, New Mexico. So I just wanted to show you what a healthy tortoise looks like. As you can see by the tortoise, it didn't have like anything drooling from his mouth, nose, lips, any weird stuff coming out. So when you're buying a tortoise, that is what you should look for. You should look for one with clear eyes and no discharge or bubbles coming from the mouth or the nose. Okay, so I'm going to show you how I package my tortoises. Now, I don't like to ship uh, tortoises just for the fact that I prefer local sales and I am very upfront about that. I always tell uh, potential customers to uh, go, you know, through a local breeder if they can. Um, and, you know, if, if I feel that the person is the right customer, I, first of all, with, with any customer, I always talk to them first. It's never just a, hey, I'm, I'm interested in a tortoise. Can, can I buy it? And, you know, right then and there, you get your tortoise. It never works like that. I always, any of my customers will tell you, I always talk with them. I always make sure that there's like a minimal general, uh, trust that, that I have with them. So now I want to tell you, you can go and buy shipping supplies. I don't like to do that. And the reason why I don't like to do that is if I have um, suitable shipping supplies, I will use that instead because if I go and buy shipping supplies, I will charge that to the customer. And, you know, I really don't like uh, you know, making the customer pay more than necessary, which is another reason why I don't like shipping because I only ship overnight express. Uh, and, you know, for the obvious reason, because, well, it's a live animal, <laughs> but, um, you, you know, it, it could be very expensive. Like for this to go to Albuquerque, it's actually $53. So, I tend to, if, if I have something on hand available, I tend to use that instead because otherwise I'm going to have to go to Walmart or wherever to get some shipping supplies and it's going to be on top of that for whatever I charge the customer. So anyway, so let me show you what I'm using. Now, if you're a parent, you know exactly what this is. But if you're not a parent, this right here is a baby wipe container. Now these, they come for free if you buy baby wipes in, in bulk, which I do. I buy them in bulk packages and these come for free. So I always have like these lying around. And these are great um, for containers to ship your tortoises in. Now what uh, some people do is they use pouches, which is fine. Or they, uh, if it's like a yearling or a hatchling, they'll use a sock. Or they'll use like those uh, throwaway containers for food, which also works um, as well. Now, this is a toy box that I have. <laughs> and here's the pouch. I actually made this pouch. I'm not using a pouch, but I just wanted to show you. Um, and so this toy box that I have is actually perfect for shipping because if you notice... There is a bunch of holes in the box and it's something that the container would fit in snugly. It is a good fit for the container and it goes right in to the box, into the toy box. It fits very nicely and the toy box fits into the shipping box. Now, if you're wondering, well, why do you need all these different boxes? The reason is because if you've ever had anything delivered by postal mail or UPS or FedEx, you know that the delivery man will just toss the package. It doesn't matter what's in it. I've had like so many things where, you know, I will write fragile or caution or this side up and they don't care. You know, they'll toss it in the van. They'll toss it on the conveyor belt. They'll toss it. <laughs> like, they'll just toss it wherever. And the funny thing is, um, even when I went today to uh, drop it off at, at the post office, I told uh, the guy it was fragile. And he was like, oh, yeah, no problem. And he still tossed it into the bin. So they don't care, you know, um, what it is. They're just going to toss the package.
So that's why you need, you know, to make sure that it is very cushioned well. So here I am taking him. So now I want to tell you this part, I sped it up to five times is actual uh, length. So this part actually took me 30 minutes. Now on the video, it's only going to be like a minute long, but in reality, this process was actually about 30 minutes. When I am preparing a tortoise to be shipped, it actually takes me about five hours to prepare it to ship. And what I'm doing is I'm hydrating the tortoise. And to do that, um, they, you, you know, you, you soak them. So I, I actually have a, right now I'm in my laundry room and I have this wash, uh, wash basin, which is great um, for soaking my tortoises in. You should not put your tortoise in something that is more than an inch of water for soaking because they, they are not turtles and they will drown. Now, as you can see, when I'm soaking him, he poops, right? But again, this, this wasn't something that happened instantly. This was something that took 30 minutes. I cannot stress that enough because I don't want people to think like, oh, okay, he's going to poop right away. This took 30 minutes to do. And as you can see, you know, um, the drain, it, the water's draining right down into the drain hole. And this is after he's been dry. So it took about another hour for him to dry. And I let him air dry. I let him air dry naturally in room temperature. Now, after he's air dried and everything, I put him into the little container. Well, I wrap him up. I wrap him up in a piece of newspaper and I put him into the little container and see, it's a snug fit for him, but it's all right. And now I put the top on. Now I took the lid off because there's all those holes there. So I don't even need to make holes. And now I'm going to stuff the newspaper in there. Now, when you do this, do not make it airtight. Now, why are you not making it airtight? Because if it is airtight, then, you know, it, it kind of defeats the purpose of you having all those holes in there if you're making it airtight, right? Now, don't worry though, the tortoise is not going to suffocate. How do I know this? Because my tortoises, when I burn make them, they are under like two feet of soil. If I let them burmate naturally in my yard, they're usually under like six feet of soil. So they're definitely not going to suffocate. But you do need to pack it tightly. Not not airtight. Don't do it airtight. But pack it snugly so that, you know, when the mailman is tossing your package around, your tortoise isn't going to go flopping, flipping around and potentially die. <laughs> so now I have the inside of the container snug. Now I'm going to cushion the side of this box. Obviously you don't have to do that if you have, um, if, if you have a box that fits the container perfectly, then you don't have to do this part. But I'm doing this part because I'm using the box that, uh, the toy box with the container. Um, again, you know, you, Whatever shipping supply that you have, I mean, if you um, if if you went to the store, they actually sell like a uh, like the styrofoam insulate uh, like inserts. I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about or not, but there it's like styrofoam pads, and it it basically cushions it. You you could cut it to um, the size that you need it to, and it'll cushion like uh, the whole entire box so that you know, it doesn't go shifting around or anything. So now I'm just cutting the top uh, wrapper off because there's a hard plastic there and there's a hole in, in the toy box. And right now I'm stuffing the top again, just to make sure that it doesn't go shifting around and nothing is bumping around. And what you what you want to do is you, you want it to have enough cushion so that Whoever's tossing your box, because I guarantee you, your bo your box is getting tossed. Whoever's tossing your box isn't going to be hurting your tortoise. But you don't need to do it airtight because, again, if you're making it airtight, you're defeating the purposes of 
putting all those holes in the box. So now I'm cushioning the side of the box. And you know, if you if you don't have supplies that are suitable, then then you will need to buy packing supplies. But I did have this that was suitable, and you know, I've done this before, so I knew what I was doing. Um, but my first time shipping, you know, I I went and I bought uh, packing supplies. But I also wanted to do this because um, my New Mexico customer, he was a, he seemed like a really nice guy. I mean, I don't know if he is or not, but he seemed like a really nice guy, and I didn't want to charge him shipping supply on top of uh, on top of the the shipping because it actually cost fifty three dollars, and I, I was a little hesitant to ship it because it seemed. Um, quite pricey, but his shipping zone from my shipping zone is a zone six. Um, and this is actually the first time I'm even shipping it, uh, that far to someone. So no matter where I've shipped in the past, I've always only shipped, uh, the furthest was zone three. So from my location to his location, it's a zone six, which is why it's so pricey. So, Right now, everything is packaged securely. And now I'm just going to put one layer of packing tape on the top. Now, and as you can see, I left a gap on the front, uh, on the lid. Now, usually what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to squeeze the ends together so that there's no... Um, you know, there's no gap, but I did that because one, the gap, you see what happens on the gap at the corners, there's little holes. If you leave, um, if you leave a gap in the lid, there will be little holes on, on all four corners. So that also helps, you know, because again, I'm not looking for it to be airtight. Now, what I do is I take the sides right here and then I'll do it on the other side too and that will complete it now if you're thinking well what if somebody opens it trust me if they're going to open it they're going to open it 